we're going to dig into this picture of a of a relaxing. We're going to try to capture the relaxing mood of a horse pasture with with red barns nestled up against uh, some pine trees. And um, I want to first start with a lesson from last week, and that was the focal point. Well, if you divide your any scene into thirds, you'll get four intersections. Here was my value study. I have an arrow here saying that the, this arrow, area in here where the couple of horses in the red barn will be my focal point. This area up here is interesting, but it's not going to be my uh, the main story. Um, I want to also give you a little lesson about fence posts. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you have fence posts that are the same distance apart as they move toward a barn, it's, it's rather dull. Um, you wanna try to get some variety into, um, into, your, into your posts, uh, picket fences and things like that. So a, a more interesting way of doing it is to have different amounts of space. This, and then this is wider. This is narrower. And also some of them, because they're farm fence posts, can be canted or bent a little bit in different directions, depending on how the horse rubbed up against the fence post. Um, so as, uh, as you go back to your drawing, the, the image has the posts very, very regularly spaced. And I think uh, for variety's sake, you wanna move some of them around. I'm going to... Uh, talk a little bit about the, the paints. Um, it's always good to have fresh paint on your palette. And I usually put about um, as much paint as would be the, my, my fingernail or thumbnail, depending on how big the painting is gonna be. All right, I just put some raw sienna out and I've refilled my blues before, uh, before we all started recording. I refilled my blues and colors. Um, you want your paints to be like jelly, maybe jelly that's had 10 seconds in the microwave. If your paints, your tube paints are like dried toothpaste, you're gonna to be very frustrated uh, trying to mix the paint. It just, it's just very, very hard. And it's also not very good for your, for your brushes. All right, who we got? I got everybody in here? All right. Okay, I think I'm ready to paint if you're ready to watch. I'm gonna, as we did the last time, I'm gonna start with the sky. I guess this is the, this is the part I like, huh? All right. Pure, clean water across the top. I'm using a, a fairly large, um, I think it's a, squirrel or camel's hair brush. They don't have to be too careful up around the trees. I'm gonna be going over those. I'm even gonna cover over the, uh, the, the metal roofs of this barn. Why are you doing that, Ned? Yeah, you'll see, I'm, I'm gonna to wanna- to, um, You don't water over everything. Water over everything, right down to this line of the hillside, boom. And down here, and I'll show you, is that Carol must be asking a question? Okay. Okay, so there's, 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 I'm checking to see that I have, there we go, okay. Now I'm going to put in, it's a November day. Um, And I'm gonna put just a little blush of, of raw sienna up into the sky. Uh, I need a little bit more. I think I told you last week, if you, if you, if you think the color looks just right in watercolor, you're probably too pale. Uh, so I just threw a little bit more on there. All right. Now. I'm gonna take a little cerulean blue. And ultramarine blue, a mixture of both. 
I'm going to throw this across. Uh, now, all this area here is going to be covered by that mountain and by the trees. And I'm, the blue of the sky is going to get reflected. The, the roofs are going to reflect the, the uh, color of the sky. So I'm going to bring this blue color right down. Right down here. I'm going to go right to the horizon line of the land here. Get a little bit of this little tiny barn. And send that up. And that's, and I'm gonna have trees over here. So I'm gonna just put a couple of indications of tree there. And a couple, of, okay. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause here and let you all throw some, some color on your page. Um, Perhaps if not the yellowish color, if you want to throw that alizarin crimson or a very pale pink color and then have the blue sort of run down into it. Um, that's nice. I know that my mountain is going to be purple, a purple tone so that the yellow is a nice contrast with that. So that's why I kind of uh, chose that color. All right, I'm going to give you a few moments. I'm going to leave the, leave the, um, the recording running, yeah. but um, you know, Take about take about ten or fifteen minutes to start throwing some throwing some water and some paint around. Ned, is your uh, paper lying flat? Uh, no, it's at about a uh, about twenty five or thirty degree angle on a tilt top table. Thank you. And um, for those of you at home. Uh, uh, in the studio, I've given everyone a two by four, a small chunk of wood. And so that their, um, their surface and the, their paper is also at a slight angle. Um, if you're at home and you can take a, a muffin pan or a bread pan and uh, tilt the top of your, put the top of your uh, board on that or watercolor pad on that, that uh, works pretty well. Uh, the, the the blues are the t are ultramarine and cerulean. There's no red. That's right. No, I didn't put any red in there. Okay. How are people doing on uh, letting that color flow down to the edges of the barns? Oh, <laughs> I just. I just had the blue mountains all bleed into the yellow sky. You know, you'll still get, you can always throw a little bit of yellow back on top of that blue if you want, um, while, while it's still wet. I'm trying to pat it with a paper towel. Is that what I should be doing or not? Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, that's, <laughs> Suzanne, is your, is your paper out of tilt? Yep. Okay, okay. That was a raw sienna, right? Not a yellow. Is that correct? Yeah, I used raw sienna, which is a, a dirty yellow. Yep. Ned, does it matter which way the paint brush is going? Like, does it matter? left handed, right handed? No. <laughs> no, no, but I mean uh, vertical or horizontal. Well, you know, if I'm doing ocean or a sky, I usually go horizontal. Why do you ask? <laughs> Your uh, blue has a nice blackish tone in it. I know you said you didn't use black in it. Well, what is it that makes it that less than bright color? 
Um, well, I, th I think the ultramarine kind of darkens it up a little bit with the cerulean. Okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to start on a little bit of the foreground, and this this won't take much time at all. And then I'll give you a little bit of time to work on the foreground, um, and then quite honestly, when the foreground color gets dropped in, you basically have you know 85 percent of the painting covered with some paint. Now it's not we're going to put more layers on as we go. So I'm going to um, let's see, we're still recording. Good. Okay. Oh, let's see, I gotta look at my picture. Um, okay, so this is not a, a bright green like you'd see in the spring. I'm going to throw some water on here. We're gonna go around the barns, around some of these. Go through some of those fence posts. I'm gonna to try to go around the horses. Okay. Well, you'll see. Okay. Boop, boop. Oh, I forgot to do that little bit of blue here. Huh? I forgot that. Okay. Um, okay. That horse is going to be darker than. Okay, I'm going to go over that horse because it's going to be darker than the than the color of the ground. Okay, yellow. Let's. Okay. Oh, I just have water, just plain old water. Okay, so I have gone around a couple of these fence posts. Um, ooh, going through a couple of, uh, the horses have some, or some of the horses have the blankets on them. So, um, uh, I'm, those are little patches of color. I kind of like, okay, I'm going to go back with the, what am I going to get here? Some raw sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna. And cerulean blue. Let's see how this. Okay, let's get that blue on there. All right, so here we go. Let's... I wouldn't say this is a green green, but with the. Cerulean blue, and the raw sienna. I get a, a dirty, pale green. I think it's to the color of these. And I'm going right through some of those fence posts. I'm not cutting around every one of them, but I am that horse. I'm leaving the Cover that horse open, okay. And then down through here, I see a little bit more sunlight. I'm throwing a little bit of the burnt sienna down here. Okay, so this far hillside is sunlit. So I'll put just a little bit more raw sienna. I'm gonna go right through that darn horse. It's too, it's too small for me to pick around it. There we go. 
you'll see these fence posts are kind of sticking out. And that's all burnt sienna. Did, did you say a little burnt sienna? Yeah, with a little cerulean blue. Okay. Yeah, okay. And uh, in some areas it's got, it's got a kind of nice model look. Uh, the paint granulates, it falls into little holes and crevices. And that's kind of nice, I kind of like that. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna give, uh, I'm gonna throw this color right up, right up the side of the hillside there. Ooh, okay, yep, there's the horse, there's that. All right, okay, I'm gonna give you, um, Why are you what's that? Where is it up? Oh. So you can see it better, the whole thing better? Um, so you can see all your gear, right? Just... Yeah. We're re refocusing the thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to. Well, I've got that raw sienna kicking around. I'm looking ahead to something later. I'm going to put a little bit of raw sienna in these barns. These barns are hay barn, holding hay. So I'm going to put that, that light tone in there now. I'll go over that later. You didn't put any brown in there, did you? No. Everything you do is like yellow and blue. Well, I mean, I'm getting a green, so. Okay, so that's a pause. Um, we're about a half hour into it and we've, we've covered, you know, like I said, 80, 85% or 90% of the painting with some sort of color. Ned, did you throw a little raw, more raw sienna on the right there on the hill? Did I hear you say that? Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. We're a little more rusty, and I said, oh, there's a little more sunlight on that one. Got it. Um, Got it. Okay. Learning these colors is, is so important. And the blue and the raw sienna. Yeah, the cerulean blue and the raw sienna. Raw sienna is like a yellow? Yes, mm -hmm. a dirty yellow. I'm kind of toning down the bottom of this. This area here. Burnt sienna is two. Burnt sienna is a reddish brown. Yeah. Yeah. Don't use it. I, I, I use, yeah, I, I, I put a little touch of it in there. It's kind of strong. Did you go through the fences on the barn? Around I the did. barn? Yeah, I did. Um, what am I gonna do with those fences? They're not gonna be white. Uh, Ellen, I'm gonna put a little little tone of light blue over those fences, uh, cerulean blue, I guess. And I'll paint the red between the slats. Okay, good, good idea, good idea, thanks. I'm gonna put a little Okay. Well, basically, you need to um, mute everyone except for your computer. Okay. 
How did you do the fences in front of the barn again? I just you put a little, a very light tone of cerulean blue. It's, you know, the same color that was sort of up in here. In the, in the photograph, the fences look kind of white, but I know that they're not gonna be bright white. And I don't want them to be so bright that they take your attention over to that, that side. And were you using yellow ochre or raw sienna on the grass? What, what was that question? Were you using yellow ochre or raw sienna in the grass? Um, I was using raw sienna, though you can use raw ochre. They're pretty close. Okay, I'm gonna begin with the mountain color. You'll notice on purpose, I have my mountain line going off the page, not at the corner the way the photograph is. That's a little bit contrived or too coincidental, but rather a little bit inside here, heading down toward these trees that are sort of in the foreground. Um, all right, so I am going to get my wow, this is a pretty big brush. I'm working on a half sheet, so I will be using larger brushes. If you're working on a smaller piece of paper, then you, you don't want to use a really huge brush. It gets a little out of control. But I'm going to use this <clears throat> number 10 is a bay squirrel brush. I'm going to get some cerulean blue, alizarin crimson. Okay, and here we go. And you know, when you mix the color on your palette, here's a little tip. You don't want to mix it to death. Um, you know, if you mix pancake batter and you over mix it, pancakes come out thick and gummy. So if you have a little bit of red and a little bit of blue irregularly on the brush, so be it, that's okay. Now these Vermont mountains made by the glaciers. And this part I can kind of be And now rather than take a lot of that purple all the way down, I'm just gonna, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm just gonna use almost clean water down in here. Now this is cerulean blue and black. I've got ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And what's the other? 
Alizarin crimson. It's kind of a, yeah. Ed, just to clarify, I thought you said cerulean blue the first time. It's ultramarine. Oh, I'm sorry, then I was wrong. I, it's it's ultramarine blue. I it, thank you for correcting me. What is it? It's ultramarine, it, ultramarine blue and alizarin. Okay, now I'm coming right down to here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some of this. Get a little hint of these trees here. I want to see between the trees to the mountain. Okay. Now I am sort of anxious to get in my green trees while this is setting up, but it's almost too wet right now. So I am going to just do a little bit of work in the foreground while I delay putting paint in the upper part. You follow me? All right, what do I still need to do in the foreground? I've got to take... A little, little bubble of water down there. Okay, I'm gonna take my number six is a bay. It's a fairly large brush. I'm gonna work in some of the shadow shapes that I know I'm gonna use later on. I, I thought I'd do them near the end, but I think I'm gonna throw them in now. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do ultramarine blue now and the raw sienna. Ooh, too much raw sienna there. You see my palette? I just went crazy there. Okay, now I'm gonna have a big color. This is a uh, shadow color coming across here, going around and hopping around there. Now this is the shadow of a tree. So there's gonna be places where it shows through. Here's another part of it coming down through here. So my bottom corner is kind of, and I'll put a little. What colors for the shadows? Yeah, I got uh, raw sienna and ultramarine blue. I'm gonna leave a little little peak of there, peak there. And some of these shadows actually will continue underneath the horses. So I may as well throw some in and I call also these. These fence posts are creating some shadows too. Well, I didn't think I'd get into it, but I'm gonna get this damn horse in here. Okay, that horse is in. Is that, did you use burnt sienna on that horse, the last yeah, one? Yeah, that first one was burnt sienna. This one's raw, uh, raw umber. Okay. I didn't make life easy on myself by putting a post right through that horse, but that's, that's the way it goes. All right. And this horse is going to have a little bit of bright, off, a little bit of bright cerulean blue right on, right on that. right on that horse blanket. Okay, 
Now pay attention. Here's where the good stuff comes. Um, this is set up enough. It started to dry enough that I can start putting in my, my pine trees. All right, so I'm gonna take my Isabelle brush, my number six. Um, wow, okay. Little new gambo's yellow. And cerulean, nope, and ultramarine. Okay, these, these trees over here are definitely in sunlight. So I'm gonna use that new gamboge. And I want to leave some holes through the trees so you see that nice mountain color in the background. Uh, what am I doing here? This tree is going to come right up to the very tip top. Okay, it's a little bit. Color for the trees. A new gamboge yeah. yellow and some ultramarine blue. Now, as I come down, the trees are less bright. So I'm gonna go raw sienna and ultramarine blue. I just ruined it. I just ruined my painting. Ultramarine again. Now this gets a little tricky down in here. I want to have hints of the pine trees. And there's the, the shadows going up the hill. Okay, stay with me, stay with me. Now, raw, raw Sienna and ultramarine. And here we go. I've got not a lot of water on the paint, on the brush. And the edges are what's creating the feeling of pine trees. I can't go fast enough now. I'm going out, out, up, back and forth, forth and back. This tree will be a little bit taller. I don't want to have two trees exactly the same. They look like Jack and Jill or something. You know? Um, I'm saving some places inside there. Uh, I got another one here. A little more yellow in that one because it's more in sunlight. Notice I'm just flicking the brush, the tip to make those. And then down in here, it gets pretty darn dark. So I'm using some alizarin crimson. And ultramarine blue. I don't think you can get two colors that darken a canvas more than those two. Raw Sienna, I'm almost out of my raw Sienna. And the ultramarine. I'm gonna go around these grooves.
And there's some areas that are fairly light. These trees in here. You have to be careful with my edges here. Now back to the, some of those darks. All right. What colors were the mountains again? The mountains were ultramarine blue and a lizard and crimson. Now, this is called negative painting. I'm, I'm painting between the light colors of the foreground trees. A little bit of burnt sienna. Mm. How's it looking, Woody? I'm impressed. <laughs> good, good. Okay, now that's, I'll put a couple of these little dark spots. Kicking in here. Okay, this is looking pretty good now. Mm, come on. Okay, now we're gonna show you a little watercolor trick. I'm using the back, take a look here. I'm using the back of my, um, my plastic three quarter inch brush. I've also sharpened the back end of this brush. So it's kind of like a, like a chisel. And if I, when the paint is slightly wet, I'm scratching through and creating a feeling of tree trunks. In the back there. Um, and I will put a few of them down in here. Oops, that's, that's see, that's too wet and it's not doing it. Um, Okay, you don't want to overdo a good thing. I, if I remember, I'll come back. Oh, here we go. Just a few irregular marks. It kind of breaks up that uh, the, the very dark uh, greens and blues in there. Yeah, I don't think I want to mess with that. Okay, I'm gonna pause there, that's, that's plenty. You've got, uh, I did a little bit of foreground, I think, <clears throat> while I was waiting for the <clears throat> mountains to dry more. And then I started just adding, you're just adding a lot of color, keeping the tree line irregular, you know, here, medium height, tall, small, <clears throat> Keep it interesting. It's like painting abstractly. I'll bring this up. You can see the scratch marks in there. You're scratching right to the white of the paper. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna take a little, I'm gonna pause there. Did you say pause the recording?
no, no, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm stopping working. Yeah, I just leave it alone. Yep, yep. Ned, before you started painting, putting the mountains, the ultramarine and the lizard on the mountains, did you put a wash on that or you just went right onto the paper first? Yeah, no, I went, went right onto the paper. I, I could have put a wash, but um, Got it. that would have had, this the whole thing would have been too, too messy. Got it. Woody, you're in Vermont, right? Yes. Yep. About two inches of snow. Yeah, I, I drove out yesterday in the snow. And it, it, it wasn't bad, Route 22 wasn't bad. Yeah. I'm going to change my water. I, you won't need to do it until you finish some of these darks, but uh, my, my water is pretty, pretty gross. Just pure water. What colors are the trees again? Um, question about the trees? Yeah. Uh, everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> I had um, over here, the lighter trees were New Gambo's yellow with the ultramarine. And then over here, <clears throat> um, I have raw sienna with ultramarine. But in the deeper, darker areas, I added a little alizarin crimson. Now, alizarin is a red, so it's the opposite of green, and that's what makes the, a green darker. Um, add a touch of red to it.
Oh, Sienna. clean my water and I'm going to start in on these red on the red barns. Now notice this side is the lightest red of all. It's facing the sun. This is a medium red. This is a medium red. That's a medium red. And then these shadows are fairly dark reds. And this one has a, a shadow coming down here. I want to make sure that shadow and this one are parallel. That would goof things up. I do have to put in some darks where the uh, where the open open barn doors are. I'll deal with that later. I have some shadow colors on the red, like up in here, a lip under here. Anyway, um, enough talk. I'm going to start with my very my lightest red. I'm going to get ooh, a little bit of cadmium. That's too bright. Cadmium with a little bit of alizarin, and that'll. Tone it down. The cadmium is so fire engine -y. Oh, that's too pink. I'm loading up a little bit more raw sienna. I, I, I used it all up on the trees. So cad red and raw sienna for the barn? Well, I'm, I'm trying it. I'm, Got it. OK. Uh, cad red, and I have a little bit of alizarin. That's too pink. I don't like that color. OK, here we go. Cad red touch of alizarin and raw sienna. And I'm going to say this is my, my lightest red right there. Yep, yep. Just one red? Yeah, I put a touch of alizarin, but I'm not sure I needed it. Okay, now I'm going to start in on, the, on, a, on a deeper red. You know, in Rockport, Massachusetts, they have this fishing shack. It's called Motif Number One, and it's out on a point on a, on a rocky, on a rocky. Uh, uh oh, what happened? Well, um, what were the two colors for the red? A Camden red, and what else? Oh, I can't. I, I'm just I'm just saying goodbye just, to that. Okay. Okay, now it's upside down and backwards. I think Maria might have called. I don't know. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, what were the colors again for the barn? The cadmium red and what else? Alizarin, crimson, cadmium red, a little bit of raw sienna. Now, this is me. I don't want it. Or is that you, Woody? Woody, is that your phone? I got it. We already did that thing. Okay. Okay, I gotta wind this painting up again. Oh, okay. Okay, just when I get my colors ready. Okay, I was saying motif number one in in, pro, in uh, Rockport. Okay, Elaine. Shh, Elaine. Uh, this fishing shack in Rockport, they claim the red is made, uh, it's a red that you buy in the hardware store, but then they mix motor oil from their, um, um, from their, from their, from their fishing boats. And they take the motor oil, which normally you throw away and they mix it with the red paint to get it a little bit darker. And that's sort of what I feel like I'm doing here. I've got a red, but I've added a little bit of raw umber to it. It's gonna go up and around, up and around that post. And that would be the cad red with the raw umber? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, come on. I'll straighten that out. 
There we go. And this side of the barn is also going to be that same Romber Cad Red. No, I want this a little bit darker right here. Right to there. I've got my big number 10 brush out. I'm risky here because it's uh, got a lot of sharp angles, but I think I can do it. You can see my brush, yep. Okay, I'm gonna take this right down side of that, I'm gonna do that. Who just is that Woody sighing like that? Yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, I'm giving myself away here. Okay, yeah, you are. Okay, now while this is drawing, I'm gonna go and do some of the shadows. I've got a, I've got some some brown dirt over here that I kind of like, and it's gonna go around my. It's gonna go around my horse. All right, here we go. Here's this little patch of dirt where the horses walk or so. I don't know why it's so dark, but there's this little patch of dirt here. We'll go around the horse and come back out the other side. I'm gonna widen it a little bit more at the bottom. There's that little piece of dirt now. I'm gonna go up and do a shadow up, up in here. I need a little more blue in there. The barn creates a shadow up on the hillside here, running up. It's got a point. It comes down, goes around. It goes around that horse. Okay, now let's do this right here. Ellen, here's where I'm doing this, these fence posts and painting between the lines. There's a little shadow there. Okay, now, oh, down, maybe I should get a small brush. Okay, down down here where I have a uh, small barn, I'm gonna put some darks. I put those yellows in there and I want the feeling of, there's hay in there. You've got horses, you gotta have hay. So this little barn has hay. And they're like stacked up sugar cubes. Get my smallest, well, the smallest brush that I use. I want a little, little hints. Okay. Now I've got the 
think I do. What? Really? Why would that happen? Now, well, okay, I got it. I think I got it back. Oh. Yep. What was it? I, I just pushed it in harder. I don't. All right. Now. Okay. This is a dark. This is the dark area underneath this. Barn. This little roof. And this is called negative painting because I'm painting, I'm not painting the structure, but I'm painting around the structure, the Y shaped. Supports. Okay, and I'll put a couple of windows here, four of them. Got a pretty, well, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the shadow now. Right under the roof there. Just a hint underneath here, a little thin line. A little bit thicker line here, up to the top. And then here we go. Now this line, I really love this shadow line because it points toward my focal point, the horses. Now it just happened to do that because the time of day, but this is why the picture looks so interesting. That moment looks so interesting to me when I stopped by the side of the road. because everything seemed to line up. Okay, let's get a, um, now if you are doing this, ooh, I'm gonna turn this off. If you're doing this in fast motion, this, this looks fun. Okay, I'm gonna, there is a line across here and then I'm gonna pull down Now these barns, were built with different width boards, often scrap boards. So the distances between them are irregular. And you wouldn't have been able to get a board all the way down the length of this barn. You wouldn't have been able to mill something that long. So it goes about part way down and then it hits then it stops and there's a beam and then you got more barn boards down here. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit down here. Okay, and we're gonna put in the doorway here. A window there, a window here. I'm using almost pure ultramarine blue. I'm getting, getting this big opening here, darker than the shadow. That's where the horses go in at night. Here's another door. Okay, I may put a few, a few lines in here. That's that. All right.
shadows, horses. Okay, we're going to do a few more shadows and then. Okay, the horses. This one down here has a. Okay, just a little, as long as you have about two colors on each horse, you're gonna have a sense of, let me pull this up. Take a look, you're gonna have a light side of the horse on the left and a dark side on the other side, and that makes it look three-dimensional. If you just have one, come on, come on. What's wrong with my camera? Billy, I'm moving this thing and the camera's not doing anything. I'm moving this and it's not, there we go. Okay, do we just, it just pause for a minute, I guess. Okay. Um, what was I saying? I got another horse way in. Yep, I got another horse way in the background. And you almost don't even see it, you know. Okay, let me get a little bit of a little bit of tone on this horse here. This is where its mane is. Its ear comes out. One thing, there's the other. Okay, now along with all this. I'm gonna do something with these posts. Um, so one side will be a little bit darker. And take that out, pull the shadows out a little bit further. <laughs> oh, and then run the posts that go back. At Irregular intervals along a line that kind of goes right toward the horse barn. Be a shadow line just under that middle roof. All right. Uh, now I'm just looking around, seeing things that don't look right. And what do we think about the roofs? I think they look too blue. It's too bright. So I'm going to take a little bit of cerulean and uh, burnt sienna, and I'm just going to take I just want to just tone this one down a bit. With my brush stroke, I'm just going to leave a little hint of the 
seam of the metal roof. And what about this one? Get a little bit. The same with that one. Those those roofs are just a little. They were a little too bright for me. Um, but a little little hint of some lines on that roof. Okay, and then one last thing I'm going to do, and then I'll be done. You guys in the room will see this better than anyone else. I'm going to take my brush with a little bit of raw sienna. An ultramarine blue. Billy, you're going to want to get this on camera. Right at the bottom, it, it looks just flat. And so I'm going to take some paint and I'm just going to sort of splatter it. Lane, can you see this? I'm going to splatter this paint on here. How do you do that? Can you see my fingers doing this? A little bit of color on a brush and just sprinkling it the way you would with maybe if you had a toothbrush and you're trying to spray your younger sibling with it. Okay, that that kind of now it's a little little too splatty right now so I'm gonna tone some of that down. But I like the way it feels like it's it's rough dirt down there rather than Rather than sort of flat, flat green color. All right, so I think I'm going to pause now. Let me just review. Um, the focal point was going to be this horse down here, and I've left him with a white, white cover because that's the brightest thing on the canvas. This guy has a little bit of blue. This guy is barely seen at all. Um, but that shadow line. And this hillside bring us down into this area and the fence posts bring us into the scene. So I've tried to orchestrate this so that you, your eye catches down here with the fence post and the horse and it comes in this way and kind of circles around into here. And then it certainly uh, begins to take in the whole landscape. But um, let's call that a wrap and I'll let you guys keep painting. and. Uh, before we quit for the day, I've got one um, little lesson for homework, and then uh, then it's time to clean up and have lunch. All right, give you it's uh, twelve o'clock right now. Like I said, I've got a little demo that I want to do for you, but um, I didn't really, really hear any applause right there. I mean, uh, <laughs> applause, applause. Ned, these recordings will go, we'll be able to turn on again, right? Hello? Try that, give, try that again. The recording, we'll be able yep. to do that afterwards to look at it again? Yes, um, I'm counting on, I'm, I'm gonna, when we absolutely finish, I'll stop the record button and I'll uh, try to send it to you. Bill Great. Prickett was able to make a YouTube video out of the last one. If we get that done, I'll send that to you also. Right.
No, I don't. I, I, I wouldn't know how to. Okay. So, <clears throat> that's actually easier than you think. Do you have a YouTube account yet? No. You have a Gmail account? Yeah. If you don't have new gamboge yellow, what would you yeah. use? Um, if you have transparent yellow, um, no. what yellows do you have? Um, there's a Naples yellow, which is nice. Yes. Yes. Naples yellow is great. Yeah, yeah, use that one. She wanted to throw what? Huh? She wanted to throw what? She wanted to throw Google across the room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours ago. I'm thinking this fence stands out too much, so I'm going to take a little touch of cerulean, because that was the color that was in the sky. Uh, it's dry down here, so I'm just going to touch it on there. And you'll see that it'll just take that white out of there. I can still see that it's a fence ghost, and I also think these hay bales may be too bright. There you go. Yeah. Ben, you have something to show us before we go? Yes, I, I do have a little, uh, maybe like a five minute explanation. Next week's painting will be a farmer's market with colored tents and people all around collecting their produce, holding bags, walking with children. Um, actually, it's not. It's going to be one up in Dorset. I, I had some pawing. Once I had the pawing farmer's market because it was COVID this summer, all my pictures, everybody's so spaced out. They, they, they look like they're, uh, yeah, or, or in a regiment line waiting for something, you know, a military thing. Um, all right, so here's a, here's a piece of paper. Oops, there we go, okay. All right, now. Please move over to the right. To the right. There we go. Okay. So people, 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 we're going to, people will be one of the subjects for this, uh, this next thing, the Pauline Farmer's Market. So I'm going to send you a, a short video of how to draw people, what the proportions are, and it'll be a pencil sketch. But I'm going to do some painted ones right now for you. So let's say I do boom, boom. Oh gosh, what's this guy doing? Like this. Yeah. I'll give him a little hat. Well, uh, kind of blue, kind of lost that one. Here's a little fluffy down here. Dog. Okay, there's somebody walking a dog. All right, let's say we want to try something else. Let's say we get. Let's say we got got a head. We got two two people side by side. I should have made one taller than the other. I it. Okay, this guy will throw the shoulders out. Bring him down to here. And this person is right there. Oh, isn't that sweet? They're holding hands, walking down the street. 
This one didn't come out as well as the last one. Uh oh. So we got two people there. Let's say, uh, let's say, there's another friend next to them, and another friend right near them too. And sometimes you even this person has a long trench coat. There we go. And put a little, little, little bit of hat, head up there, little, little head up here. Um, they're walking. Or they're walking down the road. There's a little bit of a breeze. Uh, I'm put a. An umbrella going there. That's all good. Uh, Woody, this one's for you here, kiddo. Got all this right. guy. You tell me when you think you know what it is. <laughs> it's a mitten. <laughs> a dog. A golden doodle. No. Oh, what? Alfred. There we go. It's a fisherman. Oh. Terrific. So we will not get into, you know, we're not doing portraits next week, but we will be doing, you know, figures. Um, Let's say, let's say somebody's, uh, there are a couple of kids playing. Do kids play outdoors anymore? No. <laughs> These kids. <laughs> um, Not with COVID. And I'm going fast for you. Uh, they play in a virtual outdoors. Yeah. So here's some kids. I don't know whether they're shooting on their knees craps. playing checkers or shooting, or yeah, craps. Shoot, shoot, shooting craps. All right, good. But that's playing outdoors. They don't look like they're playing five hundred hockey. That's terrific. A little bit of shoe, something there, you know. And then if you get some, Oops, here we go. How are we doing here? Uh, here's a lady with her. Is there something oh. to dis distinguish whether they're moving forward or back or you're facing them? Well, um, these are, some of these are from behind. Like this is a lady with, yeah. a, with a market basket. If, if they're I, all uh, they're all from behind, sort of. Yeah. If I if I want to do if I want to do somebody from the side, let's say I go like this. I'm going kind of fast here. Um, let's say this this guy's he's got a backpack on. He's got, he's a hiker. Came in off the Appalachian Trail. There we go. See? So, like I say, I, I'm not going to leave you high and dry and say, okay, do a bunch of people. I'm going to have you do some people sketches in pencil. And I will be very uh, uh, clear about the, how the proportions work so, so that your, your people don't look like snowmen or like stick figures. Um, but um, we'll get loose, loose you'll do some practice getting some loose uh, images of people and we'll deal with the, the brush and painting of them um, next time. Uh, is that all I have to say? Oh, one, 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 la one last thing. I, there are about five of you that uh, signed on. We did a critique uh, last week on, on an evening at about 
five o'clock at night or something. And we looked at everyone's work and shared what worked or what could be improved. So I will send out an email if you want me and you want to look at your piece and make any suggestions or if you're ready to share your piece from today with anybody, I'll give you a couple days this week to work on it and I'll send out an email. I don't know whether I'm gonna do it Wednesday or Thursday night, but it would be um, um, midweek sometime. So that's, that's uh, so I'll give, you a, I'll give you a picture of the farmer's market. I'll give you a video of me drawing the farmer's market. And then I'll do a video of, uh, for you to do for homework practice sketches, all right?